Our next story is about Benjamin Netanyahu, who is country is at war. And so is the Israeli Prime Minister. He's fighting on multiple fronts. And today he's making headlines for his political battles. Netanyahu has dissolved the war cabinet. It was a multi-party group that was formed when the Gaza war began to hold wider consultations on how to fight the war. But a few days back, opposition leader Benny Gantz quit. He left the war cabinet. Others wanted to join, like Netanyahu's allies. There was a lot of push and pull, but the prime minister disbanded the cabinet. This gives him more room to exercise control. It also exposes his isolation in Israeli politics and the divide in his country. So much so that Netanyahu is now publicly criticizing the Israeli army. Our next report tells you what this means for Israel. It was the 11th of October, 2023. Israel was united. Its leaders enraged. An attack whose savagery I can say we have not seen since the Holocaust. Just days ago, Hamas had attacked the country. Its citizens were taken hostage. The government, the opposition, the army, they were all on the same page. They wanted just one thing, bring back the hostages and end Hamas. Israel was at war, so its leaders joined hands across party lines. They formed what was known as the War Cabinet. It consisted of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Opposition Leader Benny Gantz, Defence Minister Yoav Gallant, Israeli Minister Ron Derma, former IDF Chief of Staff Gadi Eisenkot, and the Shas Party leader Arye Derry. It was a cabinet that represented all voices in Israel. But eight months later, Israel's war cabinet has been dissolved. Why? Because the war in Gaza has divided Israel and its war cabinet. Earlier this month, Benny Gantz quit the war cabinet. He said it's because of a lack of clarity. Gantz wanted answers on what a post-war Gaza would look like. He asked Netanyahu for the answers, but he got none. That led him to quitting the war cabinet. Soon after, Netanyahu's far-right allies made new demands. They wanted to join the war cabinet. They wanted a place on the decision table. But Netanyahu would have none of it. Including them in the war cabinet would put him more at the mercy of his far-right allies. And that's something that the Israeli prime minister doesn't want. So he decided to dissolve it altogether. It's clearly a snub to his far-right allies, especially Itamar Ben-Gavir, Israel's security minister. But will this impact the war in Gaza? It's unlikely. Instead of the war cabinet, Netanyahu will now consult his group of ministers. Decision-making will happen at the security cabinet. Key decisions will most likely be taken by Netanyahu and his own advisers. So, it will be business as usual. But it's not the only problem the Israeli Prime Minister has. On Sunday, Israel's military announced a daily pause in fighting. It would take place in the Rafah area. The pause would begin at 8 a.m. local time and would continue until 7 p.m. Why? To facilitate the passage of aid to the area. So, it was an 11-hour humanitarian pause. But it did not go down too well with Benjamin Netanyahu. He apparently criticized the decision, calling it unacceptable. This new clash between Netanyahu and the Israeli army comes amid a rift between Netanyahu and top IDF commanders. The divisions have become so pronounced that Netanyahu even criticized the military publicly, an extremely rare move. He said, and I quote, we have a country with an army, not an army with a country. It puts Israel in a precarious position. This is a country that has been at war for over eight months. Over 600 Israeli soldiers have been killed. Many of its hostages are still in Hamas captivity. And its allies, both at home and abroad, are displeased with Israel's actions. The last thing Netanyahu needs is a full-blown conflict with the army. That too, in the middle of a war. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. 
Hello, I'm Alison LaGrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections to climate change to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.